George is fantastic. When Ron and I, Ron Howard and I went to meet him after we, when we were set to do the film, we had this quick meeting with him and he described the film as a musical to us. He said, because the music will never stop during the whole film except when the source of music has, uh, is gone, i.e. The, um, the, the car has been stolen or there's a crash because it all takes place in one night with the radios going and, you know, and, and cruising. And we thought, wow, what genius that is. So, but we thought we were making kind of this hot rod movie, this low budget hot rod movie. And, uh, and George was just one of us, you know, we were all, um, peers. And, um, so he, we'd shoot at night from six at night to six in the morning. Cause it all takes place in one night. And, but George would have to, because it was so low budget, he would have to go and edit during the day right behind us. So he'd edit and then he'd come back to shoot. So he got, this went on for about you know, a week and soon you'd be shooting a scene and no one would yell cut. And I remember one time Ron and I had finished a scene and we just held and held and waited. And finally Ron said, George, George. And, and he popped up, he was on the truck, you know, the camera truck following us. He popped up and he said, what? And he said, cut, he said, cut. And we said, how was it? And he goes, terrific. And if you ask anyone on that film, that, you know, how did George direct? And what did he, you know, what were his words to you? It was one word, terrific. And um, so it was, it was like going to a risque church camp doing that movie. It was, there was a lot of mischief because you had Paul Lamatt and, and uh, Harrison, Richard Dreyfus, and they were just, you know, f always getting Ron Howard into trouble. And, um, and it was just a lot of mirth and camaraderie. And I'd include George in on that when he wasn't sleeping. Well, Ron was uh, six years younger than me, and I was so afraid that that was going to show on camera because, you know, and so I, I, well, there was no hair and makeup. There were wigs, and there was no wardrobe uh, person. We had a Winnebago with everything in it. There were no dressing rooms or anything. He was just wonderful. And, you know, of course I had watched him on Mayberry RFD and I knew him as Opie and he'll hate me saying that. And, um, he was just wonderful, but we'd be sitting in the car during a setup while Haskell Wexler and, you know, George were setting things up and, and, uh, he'd get out of the car and go and talk to Haskell and ask him a question, you know, and talk to George and then come back and sit in the car with me while we were waiting for the setup. And I asked him, what are you doing? And he said, I'm asking Haskell what he's doing and George, you know, and I'm asking about the setup and the lighting because I'm going to direct one day. And I, I, look, I thought, yeah, right. <laughs> so, um, he was totally interested in the whole process of, of the film. And, um, and we would rehearse together. He was one of the few actors that rehearsed with me, you know, I mean, ever in my career, well, Penny, but, you know, on a film, because they don't usually have a rehearsal before, um, before they start shooting. So he really, he was great like that. He was very uh, intricate in his acting and also in his observation of, of the whole process. And I guess it paid off for him, didn't it? Once the film was released, it just took off and took everybody with it, myself included. So other than that, I can't, I can't answer that. I mean, I just, all of a sudden there was this quasi fame, this almost, you know, being, almost famous, I guess. And, um, and it, because the film was that popular, you know, but, but it didn't take me into Laverne and Shirley. It just was, it, it, it opened a lot of doors for me, certainly. Yeah. And I was also nominated, which people don't know, but I was nominated for the British Academy Award for supporting actress in that.